Hi, what's up everybody? My name is Kia and here is the Kimo. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple drop-down menu, fully functional inside the Figma. So get sure to watch this video until the end. And if you're new here in this channel, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos as well. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So let's start by creating our user interface or the way that the drop-down menu is going to look like. I'm going to select the text tool and create a placeholder for the drop-down menu or the text that is going to be appear inside the drop-down menu. The second element that I would like to have in the drop-down menu is going to be the Chevron icon. I'm using the feather icons in this video. You can also use the feather icon plugin, which kind of uh, help you to get access to the all icons inside this pack uh, within the Figma without so much effort. I run the plugin and then search for the Chevron. I add the icon by clicking on it. And then I select all the elements inside the canvas and then unify the color to the white. Now I'm selecting the both element that we add to the canvas and use the shortcut key uh, shift A to apply the auto layout uh, on the, uh, these two elements, which basically create a new frame and then apply the auto layout on it. So let's add some margin left and right, top and bottom. And also the alignment, I will make it center and left. The gap between two elements inside this uh, item or in, inside this frame, I'm gonna select the eight pixel for it. Then I'm gonna select the text inside the parent frame and choose the resizing or horizontal resizing behavior to fill the container. Rename the frame that we made to menu. Now the next step, I'm gonna add a background color from here in the properties panel uh, from the fill uh, section. I can add a new color to the background by opening up our, my style and then selecting the color that I already add before. I also want to have round corners. So I add a corner radius to my parent element or parent frame. In the last step, to just make this element look a bit better, I just add a border it is very personal. You can just design your drop-down menu in a way that you like and you prefer. Previous step, we made the drop-down menu itself. And in this step, I'm gonna create the items that will be appears when user click on the drop-down menu. I'm gonna follow the similar process. Uh, so in order to save some time, I'm gonna just duplicate what we have made in the previous uh, step and try to adjust it in a way that I would like the items look like. So I'm gonna remove the chevron icon at the beginning and then reduce the top and bottom margin to four pixel i will keep the left and right uh, margin to 10 pixel as we had before and then i remove the uh borders that we define for the drop down menu at the end i will rename the frame that we made to item these are the foundation or the basic element that we would use in our more complex prototype or when we want to kind of prototype the drop-down menu. Now I'm going to convert the menu frame that we made to a component. And then I will add some variant to it. The very first variant is going to be the hover state. I renamed the properties that we made for this uh, component to state. Now I would like to kind of uh, make this uh, variant a bit distinguishable from the default version. So what I'm gonna do is maybe change the uh, background color a bit to something brighter. And at the end, I would like to add another variant, which is going to be the active state. In the active state, the most important thing is that the Chevron icon will rotate 180 degree. I can also adjust the rotation from the properties panel from here. We can maybe make it a bit bluish. Now I'm going to open the prototype panel and then select the first variant, which is a default variant and connect this variant to the second one. And now we have this interaction details panel in which we can kind of define how we want this interaction to happen. We will select the type of the interaction while hovering. The rest of the properties can, can stay uh, the same as it is, but just don't forget 
to select the animation type to Smart Animate. In sake of just checking our uh, current state, I will create a frame. And then from the asset list, I will add the component that we made by drag and drop into our new frame. Now, as you can see, the hover state is working pretty well. When the user kind of hovering this element, uh, he can feel that something is changing and is kind of indicating that this uh, element is clickable. Again, I'm gonna repeat the similar process uh, for the item frame that we made. So I select the item frame and I'm gonna convert it to the component. Then I'm gonna add a new variant by clicking on this plus button as you saw it in the pre previous step and create the new variant. I get back to the design panel and rename the properties that we made to state. And of course, the second variant, I'm going to name it as a hover. I would like to have a bit brighter background when it comes to a hover state. So I use the uh, color picker and select the color that we define for the hover state for the dropdown menu itself. Now I would like to also add another uh, state, which is the active one. And in this one, I would like to change the background color to the color of the text that we defined in the previous step. So again, I use the color picker and select the color that we have in the text there. All the variants and the types of the uh, items uh, are ready. I'm gonna select or I'm gonna get into the prototype panel again, select the first variant of the item and then connect it to the second one Again, the transition type or the trigger is going to be while hovering and the animation type is going to be the smart animate. For the next one, I'm going to select the uh, hover state and connect it to the active state. And this time I'm going to use the unclick as a trigger and it's still the smart animation. Select the active state and connect it to very first default state of the company. So uh, the trigger uh, uh, option would be unclick and then the animation or transition type is going to be the smart animate. As you can see, the item component is working very well. Now in the last step, I'm going to use the component that we already designed to create the final version of the dropdown menu. Import one menu that we made already and then one item here. Duplicate the item uh, component that we have here and then select these two and use the shortcut key uh, Shift and A to create the new frame with the auto layout uh, applied on it. Now I can adjust the gap between these two items to maybe eight pixel or a bit less four pixel and of course the left and right and top and bottom margin something like four pixel uh, now when I add a new item you can see it will arrange automatically on the bottom of the list and everything looks good and works uh, well I call this frame the item list and I would like to add a background color same as it is in the items to just kind of hug the items within it. I would like to also add a corner radio, radius and it's gonna be eight pixel like the menu itself. Uh, I'm gonna select the items in the item list and from the uh, horizontal resizing, I would like to select it uh, or make it to the uh, fill the container. In this case, when I just resize the uh, whole item list frame, the element inside it or the child elements, which is in this case, the item is going to follow the sizing uh, horizontally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the uh, drop down menu and then resize it the same that we have in the item list. Now I'm going to select whole frame, whole elements in my canvas and use the combination key shift A again to create a new frame again with the auto layout as a default applied on it. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, kind of visualize the different state of the drop down menu in which one time the drop down menu is open and, we, uh, and the other side the drop down menu is closed. I'm going to visualize it like this that now the drop down is open here. So, in that case, the, drop, the menu itself should be on the active state. And then the second variant is going to be the one that the uh, items are not shown so I just hide them and uh, maybe just uh, kind of bring them a bit up that we have this kind of a smooth animation that the items are appearing or sliding in from top to bottom so to do so I just uh, reduce the vertical uh, let's say gap between the uh, menu itself and the item list something like minus 10 or some minus number now it's time to uh, kind of convert this to to set up component or create a component set by clicking uh, on this uh, option here now I rename the properties that we made to state I call the first uh, component here to, uh, to default and the second one to active i'm going to change the state of the menu in the first variant or in the default variant to hover and then use the prototyping tool to connect this variant to the second variant of the drop down menu in which the items are open and expanded the interaction uh, type or the trigger uh, i would just uh, define it as unclick and uh, the uh, the animation type should be the smart animation I select all the items and then connect these items to the, to the default uh, state. The property is going to be the same, not a big change. Here I will also select the uh, menu itself and connect to the uh, default state. So in order to add the horror state, uh, I'm going to add this prototype or prototype it within the drop down menu itself. So uh, I removed the uh, connection or the uh, transition between uh, to state uh, in the menu component because in that case we, I cannot uh, make it possible to open the menu and close it so I remove it from here and I would like to add it here so I'm gonna select the default variant and then uh, make a new variant from it and call it cover and in this case I just select the menu inside it and change the state to the hover in this case I'm gonna use the prototyping tools and say that when I'm hovering on this I would like to see the hover state so I remove the uh, click uh, transition because it's not needed but what we need is basically to connect the hover state to the um, active state and set the trigger uh, option to the unclick now if you run the prototype and as you can see when the user hover the items items are there and you can active them or deactivate them and close the menu and the state actually stay there there's only one point left in order to kind of make the number of items in the item is adjustable which means that if or anyone else that want to use this figma file can have this capability to adjust the number of the items in the item list. We can kind of add the new properties to this drop down menu component in which the, uh, the users can kind of uh, play around and uh, decide about the number of the items. I'm gonna select the first item in the item list in this state and then from visibility option, I will create a Boolean property and say show item one. If, if I select the drop down menu uh, component, you will see that there is one property here. Just the point is, if I turn off this now uh, or select the uh, false, uh, let's say default value, and if we go by our prototype, you can see that there is only four items. However, in different state or the, in the other state, we still have the five because those items are not connected to the properties, the Boolean properties that we made. We need to decide if we want to connect this 
uh, component to that boolean properties at the beginning that make my job easier uh, but it's not a problem we can do it in this step as well so i'm gonna select the other uh, variant and then select the first item and then from the uh, here in the layer visibility i will say that show the i will connect the visibility to the show item uh, boolean properties that for the next one just get sure that you are connecting the correct element to the correct boolean properties and not the other one so again from the visibility show the item one i can do this for the rest uh, let's bring back the item one which means so the second item i can create a new boolean property which means show item two create it and then connect the others as well this is gonna take a bit time so i'm gonna fast forward this video uh, to, the, to the end that i i've done this Now when I get back to the demo frame and I select the instance of the component that we made, uh, here I see a bully, the, um, some boolean uh, properties in which I can kind of turn them off and on. If we want to see the impact, I can just put the uh, state of the instance component to active. In that case, you can see that the uh, size, uh, sorry, the, the amount of the items uh, inside the element is changing. I can also rename these items to whatever I want. Item two, select. Now as you can see the menu is working very good. That was everything that I wanted to share with you in this video. That was everything that I wanted to share with you in this video. I hope you learned something new and it was helpful for you. If it was so, I would be so happy. And please don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for me. I read all the comments and I would like to hear more from your stuff. And at the end, once more, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see other videos and follow me on Instagram. Let's learn together. See you in the next video.